selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or abbreviated SSRIs is the topic and the first thing I wanted to do is sort of draw the mechanism of action of how these uh, medications actually work so what I'm drawing here is first the presynaptic nerve ending and then on the other side is the postsynaptic nerve ending and then essentially serotonin is released from the presynaptic nerve ending um, into the synapse so these are the little circles represent serotonin molecules and serotonin is abbreviated 5-HT and this area right here in between the two uh, synapses presynaptic and postsynaptic is known as the synapse and then what happens is the serotonin molecules they are then picked up by these receptor sites so these are the receptor sites and this allows serotonin to then go on to uh, continue from nerve to nerve and allow the body to use it properly now some of the serotonin that is in the synapse eventually gets reabsorbed back into where it came from reabsorption occurs what the SSRI medications do selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors is they block essentially this reuptake so if this is the SSRI medication if they're not taken back into the presynapse they basically stay in the synapse and that gives them more of a chance to bind with the receptors so in terms basically SSRIs they increase the levels of serotonin 5-HT in the synapse by blocking its reabsorption into the presynaptic cell and that essentially is very important because that allows more serotonin allows greater amounts of serotonin to be available to bind to postsynaptic receptor sites so it's very important uh, mechanism of action to remember now why is that important why do we need more serotonin because serotonin is associated uh, or linked to depression in depression essentially you have low levels of serotonin and what these drugs are trying to do is increase the amount of serotonin in the synapse so that more serotonin can pass from nerve to nerve so that's essentially the very basic uh, mechanism of action so I want to give a few of the more common names of uh, some of these SSRIs fluoxetine is one of them Paroxetine, and these are of course all the generic names. The brand names differ from country to country, but the generic names tend to be the same. Citalopram. And I'll give the brand names if you're in North America. Prozac is fluoxetine, Paxil is paroxetine, Sertaline is Zoloft, and Citalopram is Celexa. So very commonly prescribed. And in terms of indications, reasons there's quite a few but I'll list some of the more commonly tested ones the first one of course is depression I mean that's kind of the most obvious one the next one is obsessive compulsive disorder uh, another indication is panic disorder and then an another one that's commonly tested is bulimia and post-traumatic stress disorder these are the, some of the reasons uh, SSRI can be given and in terms of side effects there's a couple that I wanted to mention that are commonly tested. GI side effects such as nausea, vomiting, constipation, and sexual side effects. Sexual dysfunction such as ejaculatory delay, 
can happen with the uses, use of SSRIs. So let's take a look at some of the clinical vignettes. 54 year old woman comes to your office. You have long suspected depression because of her vague somatic complaints, but she has previously denied being in a depressed mood or anhedonia. At this time, she admits to feeling depressed more often than not, and she is no longer interested in her gardening club or playing with her grandchildren. She tearfully reports increased difficulty falling asleep and exhaustion during the day for the past several weeks. She has decreased appetite and lost 25 pounds in the last three months. She is a depressed appearing woman with very poor eye contact and moderate psychomotor retardation. You order a TSH and start an antidepressant. You prescribe a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. You should advise her that. Well, let's go through these. She should call you if she has any problems, but most have no difficulty with this medicine. Well, that's great, but the, you should actually tell her about some of the more common side effects. Um, choice B, early on this medicine can cause headaches and nausea, and later some people have a desir, des, decreased desire for sex and an, or an increased in the amount of time to orgasm. Well, that is true. Well, let's just keep going. This medicine can cause thirst and urination, and uh, that is not true, not for SSRIs. That's probably actually talking about lithium. And this can cause weight gain and hair loss. Of course, that's not related to SSRIs. So the answer is B. Next question. 29-year-old man comes to the office with some embarrassing issue. He has always felt intimidated by women. He recently started dating a girl that he is very much in love with, and he considers this his first serious relationship. They have had sexual intercourse on several occasions, but it seems always... He ejaculates prematurely. He has had this problem before with other women that have meant nothing to him, but is very concerned now that this new woman will not be able to tolerate it for much longer. He seems reasonably embarrassed and tearful while talking about it. He asks if there's anything you can do to help him with this problem. Interesting question because he ejaculates prematurely and the side effect of SSRIs, one of the side effects, is that it does the opposite where you have ejaculatory delay so an SSRI would help actually solve his problem and then also he seems to be a little depressed he's cheerful and SSRIs are definitely help uh, a depressed mood so an SSRI would be probably perfect for him at this point and one of those is right here as choice B fluoxetine Next question. 20 year old comes to the clinic because of a problem that has bothered him for a while. She is not able to concentrate due to have continuously checked the door in the apartment and the study area of the library is locked. She checks to see that it is locked on an average 15 times an hour while trying to study. She is fully aware each time she checks that the door is locked behind her but cannot resist the temptation to check to make sure. She sometimes counts 100 backwards and forwards after checking the door is locked in order to distract herself, however, it only provides temporary relief. Appropriate medication to treat this patient's condition is, well, all this uh, obsessive compulsive behavior is part of OCD, obs obsessive compulsive disorder, and SSRIs are definitely indicated as part of the treatment, and of the choices listed, an SSRI is listed as choice D, paroxetine. And finally, a 25-year-old Caucasian woman with no past medical history presents to the emergency department for the fifth time with complaints of chest palpitations, shortness of breath, distal parathesis, and nausea. A full metabolic and cardiac workup is unremarkable. Urine toxicology is also negative. You diagnose this patient as having a panic attack. Appropriate pharmacotherapy for this patient may include. Again, just another question uh, describing a psychiatric disorder for which SSRIs are indicated. And uh, panic disorder is definitely something that you can use an SSRI to treat. And of the choices listed, paroxetine is an SSRI.